Welcome to the Wonder of Stuff podcast, covering science, engineering and technology. From atoms to android, zirconium to zoology, we'll cover it all here. Well, hello everybody and welcome to episode 13 of the Wonder of Stuff podcast. This shall be known henceforth as the Fragile episode. We were out slightly drinking and making merry last night and we're all a bit <clears throat> tentative, let's just say. <laughs> anyway, um, this, is, uh, the new, this is the new episode of the Wonder of Stuff. Uh, it's the place where you'll find news, information, commentary on science, engineering and technology from the past week and beyond anything else that enters our brains. Um, my name is John Gardner, and again this week, uh, to help us out uh, on the journey to knowledge, we've got my colleagues Richard Smith and Ross Davidson. Say hello, chaps. Hello, hello. chaps. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll plow on and see how far we get. <laughs> um, uh, I think this this week I'll start with one of my stories. Uh, if you've been reading the tech news over the past week, um, you'll know that uh, a huge uh, story erupted, um, which was about uh, a vendor of uh, of uh, computers who were has installed uh, as part of the package when you when you buy a new computer um, some software which is found to be um, a, a tool for to allow cyber criminals to get in and hack all your, your, your information. Uh, this was uh, Lenovo, and they are the makers of uh, one of the one of the biggest uh, laptop makers in the world now. And they were bundling between October and December last year. They were bundling with their new product, with their new uh, computers, a piece of software called Superfish uh, Image Discovery. I think it's called that. Yeah, uh, or Visual Discovery. Uh, and what it was, it was quite a, an innocuous little tool that bundled and basically it, it allowed um, essentially uh, you, if you're searching for some a sort of particular product and you, you're looking at an image, I think the, the example they used on their website is if you, wanted a t if you want a chest of drawers and you're looking at an image of a test, chest of drawers, it'll go away and search its big cloud database of chests of drawers and all sorts of things and come back with sort of relevant information that you could click through and that's how it makes its revenue and um, buy chest of drawers or many chests of drawers that's all fair and square that's that's great um, uh, now of course as it's bundled with the laptop and uh, nobody really knew that it was there it was sitting there working in the background and the way the real problem with it is that the way it works is um, it, it proxies the traffic that's coming from your web browser and going to the web server. So let me demonstrate. To, to give you a bit of a background, I've, I've prepared a small demonstration. Let me see if this one works. Um, OK, let me just share this out. Aha, yes. Right, so a bit of, a bit of theory about how uh, HTTP traffic passes. Uh, and this, it's. HTTP and HTTPS traffic, but it's the HTTPS traffic that we're worried about here. Uh, normally, under standard conditions, you here have your own computer and a web browser on it, and you type HTTPS www.google.co.uk or something, and after DNS resolution, it travels all the way to the web server. Well, at least that's how most people think of it. Uh, what actually probably happens is you'll have some sort of system like this where you'll have some sort of reverse proxy or load balancer in front of the web server, but it's all housed within the uh, the, the, the web server's um, data center. So it's all above board. The traffic starts here, it goes through here, and it's encrypted right the way through. So nobody can intercept it at any point on here when it leaves the browser and before it gets to the actual web server. That's all fine. Now what actually happens with this software, this Superfish software, is it sits here on your computer and intercepts uh, all the traffic that comes from your browser as a proxy and essentially does a man in the middle attack um, and you're probably thinking well 
okay, if I go to a site where the certificate is, is invalid or wrong, then I'll get a, a little um, a little pop-up on the browser saying, you know, escape now, flee to the hills. Well, the reason why it doesn't do that is because it actually um, generates its own private key, which comes with the software, and it installs it in your trusted uh, root certificates on your computer. So the next, so when it's when it's running, um, and you go to say uh, HTTPS mybank.com to do your online banking, that will pass through this Superfish software. And the reason why you don't get prompted is because it does it generates a certificate on the fly. So if you were to go into the browser your browser uh, URL and uh, look on the little padlock you'll see that the certificate is being generated by Superfish Inc uh, and not your bank but even though it's going it's going you are doing your 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 banking through it now if you if you're above board that's fine well it's not fine but it's it's you, you don't really have to worry but the problem is that this Superfish software is just the software around the core and the core is a licensed piece of software by a company called Commodio who is an Israeli company and it turns out that this piece of software um, is in lots of other pieces of software and therefore we now don't under we don't know how widespread the problem is it might not just be Lenovo um, products so um, there's the, the, all sorts of security analysts have been finding out more and more over the last week and uh, they're all thinking it's fairly widespread now so um, this 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 is uh, this is is pretty major. Now, to be fair to Lenovo, they they st stopped rolling out. I think they were only rolling it out with uh, pre-installed on their machines between October and December last year. They stopped uh, rolling it out, but not because of this problem. They only found this problem out last week, as well as well as everybody else. Um, they, they stopped it because it was it was putting up n niggly um, pop-ups for users, and the users were complaining. <laughs> So it wasn't any any security reason, and I think there was there's a security um, engineer from Facebook originally looked at it, and there was another security engineer who um, who sort of proved it, uh, and now the U.S. government are uh, uh, saying that we should stop using Lenovo products and all this stuff, and it's going out of hand. But I mean, there's there's very simple ways if you want to check to see if you've got this running on your machine and and that is if if you've got a windows computer which yeah fairly popular so i'll show you that now uh if you can go into your certificates uh um snap in and you want to go under your uh trusted root cert certification here um and you want to look into your trusted root certificates to see if there's anything called snapfish um sorry not snapfish superfish in there if you've got something like that you need to remove that straight away Anyway, I shall go stop sharing and come back. I actually forgot I was sharing. You see, I'm a bit a bit slow tonight. Oh. Um, so, yes, yeah, so, so what do you think of that? I'm just checking my, uh, my, my certificates now. Where is it in the trusted route? Trusted routes, yeah. It, it, it basically comes with a, a private key en encapsulated within the software, and it deploys it. But it's the same yeah. private key for on, on everybody's machine. And the pass, although the, the private key I'm, is I'm itself. Safe. I'm safe. You're safe. <laughs> the yeah. private key itself is encrypted, but the password for the encrypted private key is actually stored within the software, and <laughs> and it's decompile that. And all it is, I think, is just the the company name Commodio, which is the one that they bought the technology off in lowercase. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. I mean, that that sort of method of doing that um, that certificate thing, I have come across before. Um, I, I've used a bit of software called Fiddler. Um, oh yes, fiddler. Them. Yeah, yeah. Seeing that for development and stuff, and that's how that's how that works to enable you to do secure sites. It installs yeah. its own certificate, and then it can. But obviously, that's a that's a genuine. You want to see the the unencrypted yeah, you're traffic. You're doing some troubleshooting with that. Exactly. That's fair yeah. enough. Or in my case, trying to download music files from a streaming service. But you know, that's another thing. Um, yeah, yeah. I've heard about that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, uh, you see, the thing is, the same thing. I mean, uh, the Squid, which is a well-known um, uh, open-source proxy server, does yeah. something similar. Uh, yeah. Called SSL Bump. Now, the the guys who wrote uh, Squid have put a big disclaimer on, saying that this is, you know, they don't think this is should be used. The functionality is there because people have asked for it, but yeah. they really don't think it should be used because you're essentially um, 
your uh, your spoofing a, a certificate from somewhere else. Exactly. And as far as the uh, as far as the the end user is concerned, they are connecting to the end the end server, but they're not. Yeah. They're actually they're actually they're actually breaking the certificate, regenerating it again, on, and going through to the other end. Yeah. So. But it's a, it's a, it's a it's a shocking thing that someone's actually been able to get that snuck into people's computers without them knowing. You know, basically just snooping on all of your secure traffic unencrypted, yeah, yeah. effectively, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So exactly. this this is basically it's an advertising plugin. That's, that's yeah, what I, I mean, what that's what Superfish uses it for. Superfish yeah. use it for like a, a an image discovery. I guess yeah. it's like a it's it's to give you the sort of um, the sort of results that uh, pin interest would do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it it does it in a it's sort of it's local. It's on it's on your machine running all the time. Yeah. Um, so I guess they've I guess they've bought this presumably closed source licensed core of the of the software. And they've built their product around it. Yeah. But it's that, it's that. I mean, that the core. Yeah, that core is the vulnerable bit. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, like I said, I think <coughs> I, I, what I was going to show you is, again, what, obviously, what could actually happen. And I'll go and, I'll go and share this out again. Um, obviously, you could have something like that where Superfish would be here proxying and it could send it to anywhere. <laughs> Evil. <laughs> uh, and then, and then, but you could still route it back. So there could be another proxy elsewhere that's just s siphoning all your data off. Yeah. So I mean, when you when you put that, I mean, Superfish, I think generally would just go off, query their database, and come back, and then continue on letting you go to the site. But that could be anything. Yeah, and, you, and there's no way for you telling apart from actually no. inspecting what certificate's being used. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess if you uh, <clears throat> if you use something like. Um, some sort of packet sniffing tool, you might be able to get it. Uh, but, but you know, Joe Blogs is not going to be having a packet sniffing tool. So, how how many end users have been affected? What's the rough numbers then? Um, well, they were saying it's it's. I don't think they know. To be honest, it's anything that the 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 the, the Lenovo ones are, is anything on their yoga. They've got yoga laptops, flex laptops, Mi X laptops. As well as anything that's got a um, an E G U Y and Z series prefix, so, so quite like a lot. it doesn't seem to affect the uh, the ThinkPads, which are the laptops that they bought from IBM, because they're uh, more enterprise. So presumably, if this is just getting picked up now, it's on a recent build that they've done. Then, so even though it's in those series, have the potential to be affected. Presumably, if you bought one six months ago, it probably wasn't, or has it gone undetected for a long time? It's well it, between October and December. That's when they were shipping them with this in. So yeah. it has gone undetected because it was only de really made. Dis the disclosure was made last week and about on about Thursday. So I, I and I, I think by purely by accident, somebody in face some of the, the some of the, one of the security analysts in Facebook must have you know met, perhaps he was using somebody else's Lenovo computer and going, that's strange. You know, it, it might have been something like that. And I think we've yeah. we've talked a bit before about how how that type of uh, of discovery is is, you know, quite important. Those little accidental little things. I don't so think there... they were on purpose trying to find it. I think they just they just walked into it. Yeah. So are there any stories of anyone attempting to bring action for this? Because obviously, you know, the things like going to your banks. You mentioned you your bank. If I'd found out that someone had done this without making it explicitly obvious, I'd be fairly annoyed. I mean, I probably wouldn't take any further than that, but. Yeah, Some well, uh, uh, obviously it's getting. Uh, I don't think there's been any uh, any any zero day stuff on it. Um, yeah, but I, you know, I, I stand corrected if I, if that's not the case. But um, the the important thing is that um, all of the major security vendors, AV vendors, are now producing. They're they're putting it in their various definitions to remove right, this so certificate. Get, get removed. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Lenovo have also uh, install, uh, released a, a removal tool as well. Um, but it, the the guy, the CEO of Commodio, who's their technology that's all been put under um, scrutiny, he he was unavailable for comment. Right. <laughs> and if you look at their website, I just went to the web. Yeah, if you, I just went to the website before um, before I came on, and uh, they've actually taken the website down. Right. Yeah, they've actually that said looks, uh, that looks dodgy. Well, yeah, they've actually said just it's just a one page with a with a with a line saying uh, we are under a DDoS attack. Um, 
most some people say that it's just because we've we've got a lot of traffic because of recent stories but we have looked at our logs and there's lots of repeated connections coming from different ip addresses and stuff like that so i don't know i reckon they just can't cope with the amount of people that's on it yeah just trying to see it, it, it sounds very much like they're a tiny little company doesn't it uh yeah it does it sounds like they've hit on something and uh and lots of people want that type of technology to do or they they need that type of technology to do some other technology, and uh, and they're obviously there to be, to have it licensed. But clearly, there's been some incompetence, hasn't there? I mean, oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely, yeah. They, obviously, this is um... <clears throat> nobody suggested we... this is um, sort of like a, a very cunning evil plan. It's actually just the incompetence. <laughs> uh, no, well, no, I don't think anybody is saying that. I, I think it's just it's more the potential. Uh, yeah. That it could do. So um, this is this is something that could probably only affect pre, like sort of pre-installed operating systems. Or could, how how, do, how would a root certificate get installed? Could it get installed without you knowing? I assume not. So it's, um, it's just already installed when you get it when you first turn it on after you bought it. So no, no. Well, the software will install it. The software would install it. I mean, you would have the software, to. Probably, the software is probably installed on the build or the chips. Yes, the image. it will. That's be. what I'm thinking. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. I mean, if 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 you leave uh, the normal permissions on a on a Windows machine, it would it would prompt you when it's trying to yeah. install stuff like this. So yeah. you would know there's something happened. Whether you would have any concept of what a root what certificate means. is or yeah. what it's actually trying to do, I mean, you know, my dad would not know. He would just probably just go, "Yes, I want this software." Yes, but yeah. I, I think the concept is it's not it's not um, it's not the software in particular. Because um, if you you know if you actually want this functionality and you download it and put it on, well that's fair enough. Yeah. But it's it's the fact that it's it's in the background for so many people now, yeah. uh, and they don't know about it. Well, even that's... if they get rid of, even if they get rid of it, <clears throat> restore the, yeah. the image is going to it's going to come back again. I guess yeah. so. I guess I guess really the only safe the only safe way of doing it with a Lenovo laptop is to to rebuild it with a new version of Windows. But of course. Um, as we all know, the, the uh, OEM license that comes with the new pre-installed laptops now, well, you can't do that. It's against the license policy. You would yeah. have to buy a new version of Windows. Or get a version of Windows I'm sure. that comes out because it's going to be free, apparently. Sorry, what was that? Win Windows 10 is going to be free. Oh, yeah. Is it? Yeah. Anyone, who's, for... got win anyone who's got Windows 7 or Windows 8 is going to oh, be Oh, free upgrades. Get... Free, free copy of Windows 10, yeah, free, yeah. All right. Because All basically, right. A, A was just so badly taken up that the one that kept people on Windows 10 as soon as possible. Yeah, it was, it was a bit of a disaster. <laughs> right. Well, um, we'll leave that there. We'll, I'd, I'll come back to it if we, if we hear of anything else um, regarding that type of software. Um, but we'll go on to Ross now, who's, who's. We, you know, we have one story about HTTPS, and this is the uh, the fundamental protocol, which is the next version of HTTP, uh, called Imagine it, Delivery. It's HTTP called HTTP two. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this is basically yeah. Um, <clears throat> so HTTP um, is has been around. Well, it was created in nineties by Sir Tim Berners Lee when you know the internet started, um, and you know became the the accepted. Protocol for the World Wide Web, um, and basically, when it was created, we had you know the World Wide Web was pretty much made of single pages with text, so nothing like what it is nowadays. So nowadays, obviously, websites are multiple pages. You know, you've got multiple files. You know, a typical web page could be hundreds of requests to images, style sheets, JavaScript, all that sort of thing. Um, and basically, it's it, it's not quite as good as it could be. Um, and a little company called Google, you may have heard them, um, were internally developing a, 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 an improvement to this because basically they wanted to, to make the web faster. Um, and they invented something, an experimental protocol, which they called SPDY, or Speedy. Um, and they, they basically had a, a plan to, their, their initial aim was to reduce download time by 50%. Um, and basically, it, it, it was an internal project, um, and it worked really well. 
and it's actually now being picked up by the um, IETF, the International Engineering Task Force, um, who promote all the standards on the web. Um, and basically, they are using the protocol, and, and they're going to basically announce HTTP2. Um, and they're basically going to start. Uh, I think Google, uh, Google have already announced that the speed. You know, they're not. They're dropping their development of things going the stage two, um, and it's going to speed up the web. Um, and the way it's going to do that, HTTP 1.1, which is what the current protocol standard is. Uh, basically, it's a it's a stateless protocol. The, the browser sends a request, and then it sits there, and then the server sends a response. Um, and that's basically it. But every single file that your browser requests, every single image. So when you look at a web page, it's got 50 images on. That's 50 individual requests to the server saying, "I want that one. I want that one." So a web page first request will download the, the the structure, the HTML, and that will define all of the images that are then paused and requested one after the other. Um, and this comes with significant disadvantages. You, one one request at a time, one request per connection. Um, if you have, it doesn't matter how fast your internet connection is. If you've got latency issues, if your ping time is really high, web page is going to load slowly because the actual individual requests are slower. Um, and also, in terms of those requests, there's headers, there's sort of uh, descriptions sent with the requests, and they're much larger these days as well. So the actual requests are getting bigger. Um, so HTTP2, which has been developed, um, has several advantages over HTTP. Um, which I have a list of, and there's, there's a few of them. Um, it's a binary protocol, so basically it, it, it's quick at a pause, but binary data. Um, one connection can have multiple requests, so it can you can have one connection and just have multiple requests that, that, down that same connection. Um, and it's also bi-directional. Um, <clears throat> the web server can actually push files to you as well. So, for example, um, the web server knows what images are on a page. So if your browser requests that page, it can actually send the HTML and all of the images at the same time. So basically, you don't have to request the images in, in, via an individual request. It just sends the, the, all of the contents for the web page. Um, but, uh, but, but I mean, that, oh, but that sounds like that, that it could be open to some nefarious action there. Um, I mean, if you've if you've got a, a a web server that's been compromised, and you initiate a request, could it not push down more information that than? Well, I suppose it could, but then if it's if it's coming from the server you've requested the page from, it's going to work exactly the same as a normal web page. If if the if that file is in the HTML, your browser is going to request it. So, I suppose it. it it's an interesting one. I didn't think about that. I mean, obviously, there'll be different ways of requesting web pages. I assume in the request that you send, you there'll be a way of saying, "I want the full page. I just want the text of the page." Mm. So obviously, you wouldn't want if you're on a text-only browser. If anyone still uses them, um, yeah, you wouldn't links. Want, you wouldn't want I use I use links every day. <laughs> yeah, well, you wouldn't want all the images because obviously, you know, you just want the text. You know, so in your case, the current HTTP protocol would get the HTML and it wouldn't request the images because. Not it would be pointless. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but basically, the idea is that it it it, it speeds up web browsing um, and is more sort of like suited to what web pages are these days. These rich, lots of files, lots of images, lots of videos, that sort of thing. Um, now, so most of the latest browsers already support this. So Firefox and Chrome and Internet Explorer 11 and all those were already supported. Um, I don't know in terms of servers what needs to be done server side to to, to serve these pages. So I assume the latest sort of web server software would would support it as well. Um, and it's something that only actually happens over SSL as well. This might be sort of like related to possible nefarious purposes. Um, it only ha it only works over SSL, so it's it's everything's encrypted. Um, I assume would there be a reason for that? Might be something to do with the way that it can push multiple things. It has to be encrypted with it, or perhaps just I don't know. Yeah, probably just for security. Um, but basically, the, the the news is that this is this is pretty close to being something that's turned on. I think Google are going to enable it on their their sites um, fairly soon, apparently. 
Um, yeah, as far as far as I can see, um, like you say, the browsers do support it already. Um, and uh, Apache, there's a module out for it. So, right, yeah. yeah. Wasn't that uh, something about Firefox and rejecting it for some security reason? Start uh, fi Firefox version 36 supports it. So I don't know what version we're on now with Firefox, but. Uh, Right. No, they're up upgrade process at the moment, probably about 50. Um, <laughs> oh, no, we are actually only on 30. All right, so Firefox, it must be the, 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 the version they're literally using now, because um, I'm currently on 35. Um, so Firefox must have only just, just enabled it. Um, I suspect Chrome has had it enabled um, with it being a Google product for quite a while. Um, yeah, Engine so Nginx... Nginx is uh, is also supported, so I guess it's out there. And I, I guess you'll never get it. You'll not get it for a while on uh, in IAS. But uh, mm. but no, that's interesting. That's a, a, it's a genuine a genuine step forward in in uh, the protocol because I mean, version one by one has been around for a long time. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's been around probably twenty, 20 years, well, fifteen years at least. Yeah, um, ninety nine. Ninety ninety nine. Yeah. 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 Wow. So I mean, it, it, obviously, you know, when it was, it was, it was originally developed to, to serve a purpose, and it's done very well. Um, considering how much the the web's changed in terms of the amount of traffic and, and content that is flying around, it's lasted quite well. Um, but yeah, it's it would be quite a significant up, update. Um, like I say, the idea of being able to to request and and, and serve multiple um, items at once. That's you know that's a massive massive improvement rather than the single file at a time sort of approach. So I wonder I wonder how if you go to a, say if you go to a website that's uh, that's been hosted on a server that that supports HTTP two, mm -hmm. and your browser supports HTTP two, does it initially make the connection on one point one and renegotiate to two or? I assume it'll be one of those things where you know there'll be the, the you know you can do the um, what the posts called the the ones that ask for um, support there's like that tiny little packet that says do you support this thing and it goes right. yes and then you request it and then it sends it so there'll be initial handshake sort of thing yeah yeah and then it'll just go all right every request from this for this session um would then go over http2 i assume um because obviously yeah it's going to be something that they'll need a there'll be a they'll be both going for quite a long time um so your browser will be able to switch between the two seamlessly uh, but yeah, it's, it's no. Uh, that's that's pretty interesting. Uh, and but uh, presumably from the, the, I guess the idea is that it's it's transparent to the end user, so we wouldn't know unless you unless you're actually looking at the packets, you wouldn't know whether it is going HTTP two or HTTP one one. Apart from the fact that you you might see a, a speedier, resol you know. Well, I assume so. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't see you know, unlike sort of like you know, difference between HTTP and HTTPS, where you've got you know visual indicators yeah. because the user needs to know, see that assurance that it, you are secure. With this, it's a it's a back end protocol, so you don't need to tell anyone. Um, I mean, I suppose would there be any difference in terms of developing web apps? Probably not. In terms of the actual protocol the data takes to get to the browser is not going to affect, you know, you're coding a web app, web apps, I assume, and um, you may sort of, I don't know, I'm trying to think whether you would Well, I guess not, because, I mean, different. from your point of view, it, that, that's that's dealt with by the stack underneath it, you know, you're, exactly, you're yeah. in a different level, aren't you? I guess if you yeah. were if you were writing directly uh, HTTP uh, commands, then it might affect you if... But but for general applications, I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought it would be any. It would just it's like it would, it just, would just work faster. It would just yeah. work. Excellent. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. Right. I try to uh, find out what what SPDY actually stood for, because obviously it's it's pronounced speedy, but I couldn't actually find out what it stood for. So it, why didn't they just call it speedy? It's a bit odd. Uh, I think that's <laughs> just it. Just sounds just sounds like uh, an, an ac acronym for an acronym sake, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> It sounds like uh, it sounds like BT. Um, yeah. we, we do like a good acronym at BT. <laughs> <laughs> if we have a product that hasn't got an acronym, we'll make one up. <laughs> <laughs> right. Anyway, uh, no good news. Good news that the, that the uh, for all of for all, ev all of this time where where everybody the internet generally is getting a bad press for all of the horribleness <laughs> is on there. 
it's good to know there's some technical progression going on. Uh, right, uh, Richard. Now um, I think we have your topic, and and uh, the the subject is the new biological strength record. Um, and now I'm guessing when I read that, I thought it's got to be something to do with an ant. <laughs> well, actually, the ant one um, isn't really that interesting because ants aren't actually that strong because um, it's just it's just gravity. It's just that if you scaled a man to an ant scale, we could lift more or less the same as an ant could lift. So they're not actually they're not actually particularly strong. But it is it's always one that's amused me because obviously I've written fact pages on ants. You know, interesting. Hundred interesting facts about ants, but that's so that's, so that's just a that misconception then. Yeah, it was just to do with the physics of being that yeah, small. Yeah. All right. And yeah. I suppose it's just a good good analogy because everyone knows about ants. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, what I mean is, if you if you if you did a page about ants and people say, "Oh, this is a fact about ants," well, it's a fact. It's a fact about all insects that size. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, so so ants kind of get a reputation of carrying other insects along and. That are super strong and things like that, but of course those insects could also carry ants along um, that are much bigger than. They just insects, choose really. not to. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, this is um, this is like sort of material strength. Um, so this is material sciences. Um, the previous record holder was uh, spider silk. Um, ah, right. yeah. So that's that's long been the sort of the strongest known natural material, biological material. Um, and that, for comparison, exotic spider silks um, rate 4.5 on the gigapascals uh, scale. Have you heard of that, Ross? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, is that, am I pronouncing that right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah so that's spider silks 4.5. Kevlar, by comparison, is 3 to 3.5. So it shows you. Wow. Yeah. Even with engineering, it's not quite there in terms of spider silk. Um, so you can see why these things are interesting to, to discover, because you know they inspire um, synthetics. So uh, the new record holder is limpid teeth, which by comparison is now a six point five. So blame me, uh, yeah, because I mean I heard that I heard the story, uh, but I never I, I didn't have anything to uh, to compare it against. But that is uh, that's damn strong. Very strong. Um, so it, it, it's it's stronger than all known natural materials, um, and stronger than um, all but a few um, synthetics. A couple of synthetics um, that are stronger, but um, but what this one's got going for it is um, when you scale it up. So it doesn't matter what size the limpid teeth are. Um, the, the strength doesn't go down. So with with other materials, um, there's obviously tiny flaws in the in the in the layout of the structure, um, which as it grows, those exacerbate it, exacerbate the problem, and the strength goes down. But with this, um, it's going to be really interesting to vehicle engineers and all sorts of other engineers um, because it does it doesn't go down as the um, as the scale goes up. So it's just so, a really, really well structured material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It so just hasn't been. In, I don't think it's been investigated that much yet, because um, this, this is just literally broken through. So, yeah. well, actually, that, so I was going to ask you. I said, well, well, how's the makeup of the? You know, what has have they gone electron microscopes on it and everything? And yeah, well, there's some, some good, good uh, microscope pictures actually, but um, but yeah, they're still working out the final details of why it is so strong. Um, yeah, um, geophyte nanofibers is what it's comprised of, but it's they've got a very high mineral volume. That's the thing that gives it its strength. So implications in the human world? What what could we get out of it? Well, vehicles, like I say, but um, you know, um, Formula One racing, you know, anything, any high speed vehicle racing. Um, aircraft. Just, yeah, aircraft. Uh, and even down to dental restorations, because by comparison, human tooth is 0 0.5 on that same scale. So obviously, if you can, if you can make a composite that'll um, repair a damaged tooth that's stronger, um, so it's a thing to have. Does it? Would that mean that would the, your teeth would would never your fillings would never wear out? Or yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Wow. 
Um, dead, and obviously, so loving the fixings, the fixings of them as well, I guess. Yeah, yeah that's the friend of the dentist. Yeah. <laughs> Put them out. Well, of your dent- <laughs> dentures as well, I suppose. Uh, what was what was the um, tensile strength again? The gigapascals. Uh, it, for limpid teeth, it was six point five. Six point five. Do you know what it is? You know, uh, you know, graphene, and, and you know, the, the, that's the strongest material. The graphite, graphene thing. That has a tensile strong strength of one hundred and thirty. So it's quite, you know, it's quite a way off that. But obviously, in terms of, I suppose, the, finding it something that's happening in nature suggests that it's a lot easier to sort of then recreate than, you know, graphene, which. Yeah, know, I mean, these things are difficult because it's not very, really, you know. Yeah, these things can still always inspire innovations, even though perhaps, yeah, like you say, it's still way off the strongest. But you know, it's a bit like discovering, um, you know, the, the way um, a bird sails for a long time and stuff. You can still then get something out of that, can't you? Even though it's inferior to something we've already got, um, yeah. they can do more with more with less, basically. Uh-huh. But also, I mean, uh, I'm get, you know, I mean, graphene. Is only suitable for certain things. Um, one would assume because well, of its yeah, very it's, makeup. You couldn't make teeth out of it. I don't yeah, think. no, because it, you yeah. know, it's it's a it's a, a very very thin layer. But I guess yeah. if you want a, if you want a, a, a material that has got some biological properties, then yeah, that sounds great. Well, yeah, and like I say, the thing about scaling as well, a, a graphene presumably. Um, well, I think graphene, graphene, like you say, it's very, it's, it's basically one atom thick, isn't it? That's yeah. why, and it's a one atom thick layer of perfect, you know, hexagonal shapes, and that's what gives it its strength. I don't think you could make a graphene block; it wouldn't be graphene anymore; it would be some other material. Because it would um, be more than uh, one exactly, atom. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the idea that this this sort of structure that the, these liberties are made of is strong in form as it is, and would also be have the same strength if you scale up the, the size of it. Um, does open a lot of sort of like, like you say, you know, mechanical and, and sort of practical um, uses. Um, so be yeah, be interesting. To, that'd be an interesting talking point in the pub if you got a new tooth and you said, oh, it's a limpet tooth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I think Richard and I was were talking about this last night because I know this is the the research into the the you know on this planet and the the various elements that we haven't touched on yet. Um, we would, you know, I, I think I've always, I've touched on it in, in another uh, another vodcast and said what what Joe Bloggs in the street would say. I think we were, when we were talking about the uh, the Mariana Trench and all the the, the new species down there, and yeah. that there was just there's just not enough uh, research being done on this planet, let alone going into space. And mm-hmm. Richard rightly said, well, they should be researching both. Yeah, because yeah. it's it's both important. It's not one is more important than the other. It's no. So, so the people, the, the, the scientists who've, who've discovered this, were they looking for something in particular, or is it just that they're testing the strength of materials, and this was just one of the candidates that came up? Yeah. Uh, that, do we know any of the history behind the discovery? Yeah, I don't. Want, other, other than that, it was that that they'd obviously limp, limp. Well, I should probably say about limpets as well. The limpets are aquatic sca- snails that have the conal shaped shell. Yeah. As soon as it's a, so, it's just a. A layman term, basically, it's not a it's not a biological term, really, because yeah. um, it describes lineages that have evolved completely independent. So you know, it's like birds, like we said before. Yeah, it's just a loose grouping of, um, and I think they just stop becoming limp as soon as they've got like a sort of typical uh, snail shell sort of shape. So it's not on any sort of biological reason. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this will be a particular species of limpet because there will be some that probably don't have this level of strength. But everyone knows, I guess, people who've gone rock pooling as a kid and what have you, that it's very difficult once of um, <laughs> once they know that you're there, once they feel your vibration on the rock. Yeah, you um, can't get them off. <laughs> stick down really solid, don't they? And it's virtually impossible to get them off. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's been known for a long time that they can like sort of bore into the rock face. You've actually got the they leave sort of these jagged uh, marks in the rock, don't they? Even from where they've taken the rock away. Um, so yeah, it's been known for a long time that they that they have this incredible strength. So it's just trying to unlock how they've managed to do it and see if that has any, if that can inspire some other technologies. I just wonder why it's taken so long for them to start people starting to research. You, you know, do always like, wonder, that, don't you? But then is it just that 
like you've just basically said, that there's so many millions of uh, species and interesting things to investigate that getting around to it, getting the funding to do that particular thing just doesn't come about. Yeah, yeah like Richard says, it's, it's, it's going to be a specific species that, that has this. It's not just if you went down the beach and picked up a limpet, that would have these strong teeth. Um, it'll be just, yeah, one of them. Well, I think the ones that you would, I think the, probably the ones that you see on the rocks that really harden on will be the type will be the type that that um because there'll be deep sea limp bits and stuff won't they? That, yeah. that probably won't but i think the ones that you see on the rocks probably are the right ones might not be that exact species that has the 6.5 on the scale but i suppose yeah. they'll probably be quite high on the scale mm -hmm. uh, but yeah it, it i always find it amazing that they you know, to find that this has happened not by design. You know, we talk about design, it's a very good design. That's just a, a figure of speech. It's, of course, it's not a design. It's it's incremental differences that have happened over time. The limp bits that were best able to stay on, survive through natural selection. Um, and then you end up with something that, you know, the design is not perfect because it isn't a design. Um, but still, it's up there competing with all but a few materials yeah. that you managed to make is quite incredible really and that it's stronger than Kevlar is a testament yeah. to that. Yeah, but I guess I guess it's um, it's still in progressing in terms of the evolutionary s timeline you know we, we are seeing it now if it you know thousands and thousands of years if the planet is still here then it may get better. Well not necessarily because if there's no pressure this is how it works if there's no pressure for it to get better if it that 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 strength may have been static for a few millennia because it, once it serves the purpose, there's no yeah. there's once it's good driving enough. it. Yeah, yeah. So that's the thing. It would. It's not working towards something. It's just it. When it gets to the strength where it's well adapted, that 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 sort of change remains the same. So unless but, something but, comes along and puts a pressure on them to be stronger, then they won't. But equally, we wouldn't know whether that whether they are currently under the pressure to, to changing and they're in in the middle of an evolutionary change. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they will be changing. Every, everything is changing, but um, I think unless something was killing off the ones who weren't quite as strong, um, which I don't think there is, um, then, yeah. yeah. Maybe it's in there. Do, 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 limpets, do limpets have a natural predator? What eats limpets? I don't know. Well, um, snails are usually like uh, quite low down on the food chain, aren't they? So um, they'll be herbivores. So they'll be like bottom of the food chain, basically, animal-wise. Um, I don't know. Well, I know seagulls and stuff will have a growth. They're flipped over, won't they? So yeah, seagulls eat them. I don't know whether they have a juve. They probably have a nymph or juvenile stage before they get into the shell, maybe, and that's when they're predated. Mm -hmm. I guess it's it's like hermit crabs, isn't it? When they at one stage they they don't have any. Um, yeah. Maybe or maybe shell. they're like that from the beginning. I'm not sure. I think it's their own shell, though, isn't it? It's secret. It's secretions that they make forms the shell. Or that's yeah. most nails were. Excellent. Right. Well, that's a good uh, a good point to stop. I think uh, hitting pretty much dead on the quarter, the 45 minutes, which is, uh, is it hasn't happened for a while, I have to say. Um, <laughs> that's probably just to, to do with our state. I think we did really well to get through it all. Yeah, sure, yeah, sure. <laughs> and we had some good conversations as well. Okay, well, uh, we'll leave it there for, for this episode. Um, we'll jo again join you next week. Um, uh, as always, the email is wonderofstuff at gmail.com. We've got the blog, of course, which is wonderofstuff.blogspot.co.uk or blogspot.com, whichever you would choose. Um, next week, I shall be off on my travels during the week to uh, the National Computer Museum and the, uh, the, the Space Centre in uh, Leicester and Milton Keynes. So uh, hopefully I'll get some photographs and put them on the blog as well. Do you not do your broadcast from there, John? Well, yeah. Well, I, I, we need an outside broadcast at some point. Well, I put a requisition in for the BBC EOB truck, but uh, you know, got turned down. They were doing some <laughs> athletics or something. So, <laughs> so uh, no, it's uh, it'll, I'm afraid it'll just be a visual thing, a visual history of computing. I'm quite awesome. looking forward to it. I have to say, uh, um, my wife did suggest it, and uh, I've been as giddy as a schoolboy. 
<laughs> Ross so, reminded um, me in the pub that at our, at our presentation on the Sugar Rockets on one of the first episodes, I said... Yes, I'm, you do, actually. Yeah, yes, yeah. you do, absolutely. Are we, going, are we going to have a practical? We should do, shouldn't we? Yeah, I'll get, yeah we'll we get, get a video. I've got my ca video camera and a tripod. We'll get it all set up. We'll yeah. do a proper OB. Well, sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay, we'll leave it there, everybody. Uh, so um, I hope everybody enjoyed it, and we shall see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye.